I'm Alan Ross. I'm here at the IEEE PESTND, that's a lot of acronyms, conference. This is the 2020 version that is actually being held in 2022. These interviews that we're conducting is with thought leaders on the future of the power industry. So enjoy. Hey, my guest this time around is Mike Shepard. Mike is the CEO of Power Technology Research, right? They do some great stuff for APC Media when we get reports from them that they turn into content and, and uh, knowledge that uh, has just been excellent because then we get people to write on the content and to be able to uh, uh, make decisions based on it. It's a great company, they do a great uh, job, and thank you for joining us, Mike. Glad to be here. So, first question I've got for you, you do research. Research should be forward thinking. What is happening in the industry? What are the challenges, the changes, the opportunities, or just in the power industry? Because I know power, uh, re power technology research does a lot more than just power systems, right? Correct, correct. So, Talk about the power industry in general and, and talk about change. What's happening in your opinion? Well, first of all, really exciting time. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit back to, to the, the foundation of our company, which was, okay. uh, you know, at the time we were doing, um, you know, a lot of research on, on the energy markets, right? Uh, okay. And, and we, were, we were finding out, you know, why are these, you know, interconnects taking so long and, and things like that. that you could say similar to what's going on right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the result was, hey, the grid's not ready for it, right? So, as a as an analyst, uh, the thought was, we need to go figure that out, right? And and that took us on what's now almost a six year journey, building up knowledge of of you know what comprises the grid. Okay. Um, and we felt like we had to do that first in order to understand the new things that are happening to the grid. You know, solar's been around for a bit, EV charging less so, but also very impactful. Um, and in the future, we're going to have, you know, even more changes in terms of not only technologies, but behaviors of consumers and, you know, now prosumers, right? Right. With, you know, for 2222 uh, coming into play, right? So it's, it's it's a rapidly changing environment. And uh, we felt like we had to understand the grid first in order to, to jump in there. So, okay. so that's, let's say, a bit of the premise. So Those, you've hit two change things. You yeah. Know, the question. Electrification of transportation, one big change that's taking place. Correct. And the second one is green energy, okay, yeah. the decarbonization of our energy system. Yeah, and those things are happening now, and they're happening at scale, and we're dealing with the implications of, of those things happening. And I think it, it touches on you know, various points that have been raised, especially in this conference around resiliency, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of questions get asked about, you know, are we taking away from resiliency, right, as a result yeah, right, of, of right. integration of renewables? So I think these are the key things that are happening now. Uh, and I have to say, as a third-party research company, very exciting time to be there. It's part of the reason why we were created was to, to, you know, understand these trends better and to, you know, better communicate, as you mentioned, through through media's like APC, in order to, to you know, share with the world, you know, where we think okay. things are going. So, so it's interesting. You you said at scale. Um, we are not at scale with electrification, transportation. Oh yeah, and, no. yeah. But but and who knows what scale is on green energy, right? We're we're not really sure where we're going. I don't think we can cover everything, but but it's obviously big enough now. Interconnections and everything Correct. Is big enough now. But one of the things that, that we realize is, and and maybe you can weigh in on this. Um, we have had a very flat demand curve on yeah. power. We have not been required. All of a sudden, we're seeing it spike. In fact, last year we saw it spike. Projections are from people that we've had here in this conference, anywhere from in the next decade, 30 to 100% growth in demand for power. That is a huge demand curve change. Yep. Um, do you guys do any research on where it's gonna come from? <laughs> Yeah, very, that's scale, by the way. Very good question, and uh, I guess the, the, the definition of scale, yeah. um, at this point I was referring to, let's say, a critical mass, critical right, mass. Okay. Uh, in, in order for it to have impacts on the grid, right? Uh, and knowing the direction and having confidence in the direction, you know, leading to, hey, you know, we can't just put this in the side, we can't just, you know, have some, you know, limited or isolated solutions. It needs to be a comprehensive right. and systematic solution that we're applying here. Uh, but in, in terms of, you know, where it's going to come from, uh, it we try our best to get, to get that crystal ball in terms of you know where this demand is coming from. I think it's going to be uh, in terms of uh, you know adoption, right? We have to look into like, the catalyst behind this, right? And that's 
we're talking about these new agents, um, things like ele electrification, right? Um, an analyzing, you know, who's going to be buying the next wave of, of EVs outside of the technophiles and people right. can afford it, right? Can we get EVs more affordable looking for that, that um, let's say, function, at which point it becomes synonymous with, uh, you know, uh, or let's say it becomes affordable enough that you can replace that, you know, traditional economy car with an electric car, right? And we right. see that scale improving. Um, that's going to have a direct impact on which laterals get, get overloaded, right? So right, where, yeah. where this is going to happen, uh, is, it's going to be a direct impact there, right? So uh, I want to stay on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, there's, there's leading research and yeah. lagging research. Hey, we just told you what happened. We just told you what you hit. We told you why the lights went out. Yeah. And there's leading research. And that's based upon projections that other people give you, information that other people give you. How do you gather that information? What segments of the society, the power industry, are you gathering that from? That's a great question. I, I don't want to jump to the to the, ne the next point because I think IEEE is a big part of, of where we get those kind of leading indicators, okay. right, in our, in our research. Uh, but we're having conversations with a lot of the same people that, that our customers are having conversations with. Uh, typically, OEMs, integrators are our customers. Um, and, but we are asking different questions, right? Um, and a lot of times we consider our work a bit academic uh, in nature because we're trying to come to the truth and trying to figure out, you know, what is, what's the future going to hold, right? Right, right. And um, we'll then ask additional questions about that. Okay, what business model is going to support uh, said, said changes, right? Are, are, are technologies, you know, agnostic to certain companies? Are they, are they more, um, you know, let's say limited or isolated proprietary uh, in other cases? Right. Um, so those are the kind of questions that we'd ask ourselves. Um, but in terms of kind of where we look, um, it also depends on the supply chain. Uh, and certain parts of the supply chain are different stages. So for instance, uh, if you go up the supply chain to things like power semiconductors, right. they're at a different place and they think about different things. Um, and their capabilities are different. Uh, for instance, a concept like a solid state transformer is not out of the possibility in terms of fulfillment. Right, it, right. It's out of the possibility right now in terms of adoption. So it's these kind of technologies we look at, we know about, and we, you know, we're very careful not to do the up and to the right forecasts on market penetration mm -hmm. on these kind of things. Uh, I myself have been guilty in the past that my background's in solar, uh, so looking at you know <laughs> various you know solar specific technologies, you know penetrating, we make sure we don't do that at, at our company, but we make sure that we cover the technologies, right? Wow. And one of the ways that we know whether or not implementation is going to happen uh, is is through uh, mediums like IEEE to understand are there standards being developed? Where are we in this process? Right, right. What a, you know, what, what are the questions that the committees are, are asking themselves and, and challenges that they're facing to know where in this evolution are we happening, right? Could people actually be adopting this kind of technology? Uh, and in many cases, these te technologies are already out there and capable, just of, it's, it's on the adoption side. That really is the indicator of if it's going to be a 20-year adoption, a five-year adoption right, right. on these kind of things. Okay, so let me switch gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about how do you find the staff that does all of this research? <laughs> I mean, that takes a special person to do it. So who are you hiring to do this research for you? Yeah, so I'm a finance guy. And I am the oh, oh, okay. I'm the only finance guy in my company. So and that's good, by the so, way. Yeah, yeah. It's probably you, for the best. Need one. Probably, you need half of one, probably, <laughs> on accident, right? So uh, I surround myself with very smart engineers, uh, electrical engineers, okay, uh, and uh, some mechanical as well. As you know, it's a, it's a complex system. In the future, we're going to be hiring things like chemical engineers, material specialists, try to understand the various you know avenues by which uh, you can come up with a good forecast, right? By understanding these different technologies. Right or um, substrates, if you will, that can be affecting. Uh, but I surround myself by very smart power engineers. Good. So as you bring them together and you decide, uh, uh, I mean, now you have to have people who will buy the research, people that will say, yeah. hey, uh, I want to. Eventually, I need customers. Yeah, you need customers. Yeah. Um, are they giving you, are they saying, hey, we need information on this, and then you go out and find the information? Or are you finding the information and then saying, by the way, we've got info. Which comes first, the cat, the chicken, or the egg? And don't say. Neither. Depends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Um, so, it, it's a, it's a great question, uh, and I would say it's the reason why I'll say it's a combination approach is we feel like we can't just be reactive to things as well, um, and we, you know, we're we're typically seen as third party agents, right? Not involved in the industry, but I I would counter that with saying we definitely are in a place uh, that we can help with narratives, right, uh, in the industry, and to 
you know, express in our way, not biased any technology, right, or, or, or right, offering yeah. what we think is going to happen, right? And that, that's really the value that we think we can provide and, and why we feel like we're actually, you know, integrated into the industry and not just, you know, a third-party observer. Um, you, you just yeah. hit one of, the que- uh, one of the other questions I've yeah. got is technology bias. You get, you get a certain, hey, it, th- we know this is going to be the answer, and it turns out not to be the answer. How do you, av- how do you avoid the technology bias? Well, um, I mean, from, from a basic perspective, we're not, you know, necessarily fans of any one technology or another. Right. Um, we do believe in, in, you know, efficiency, and we do know that, that there's certainly nuance, and you could even say bias from a procurement perspective that right, goes on. Right, right. Um, we try to observe these things, you know, as neutrally as, as, as possible and try to get to the truth, right? Like, right. Um, and in some cases, we'll say, you know, when we provide research, let's say on sales channels or, or uh, customer preference, type surveys, you know, we think there's, you know, a, a bias and it, it, it tends towards this, right? Okay. Whether it's a, a company, technology, um, a certain, let's say, type of delivery mechanism that gets provided, right? Um, whether or not, and it, to simple things like, you know, whether or not loose key or tur- turnkey, turnkey p- components or, or, um, or l- turnkey or loose components are, are you know, the preference of, a, let's say, okay. a utility. The, um, one of the ways that the world is changing is w- with all of this change from the step down grid to the step everywhere grid, right? It is creating power quality issues yes. that, that are, uh, that we, we haven't hit to scale yet, but we're getting there faster and faster and faster, particularly um, the idea that you get much, much more, many more transients into the system creating heat and the heat then ages uh, assets, particularly things like transformers. I mean, it has a, a, a sometimes a, a doubling of the aging effect yeah. of transformers when you increase the heat at a higher level. And, and many times it's bu- above rating, you know, so you're, yeah. you can always run a transformer above rating for a period. Now they're right. living above rating as they live above rating, yeah. not for a period of time. So. The, the idea that change creates power quality, and I haven't really read or, or grasped, other than what Schneider has written about power quality, I haven't really seen a lot on power quality, which I think is gonna be a huge issue down. So it seems to me that some research on power quality ought to be a good one. Are you all looking at that? That's a good, very, very good point, and one of the reasons why we're at, we're at this conference, and this conference is kind of very important to us, is that we ask, we ask people, like, what should we be researching? You right? should but, research power quality. Yeah, research power quality. <laughs> yeah. Done, done deal. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've actually already researched power quality a bit uh, within industry, actually. Oh, good. Because uh, yeah, this, yeah. this is a well-established topic when you have, you know, harmonics and motors running right, inside right. the industry. Um, you have power quality that you need to, to ensure to not get hit with large bills. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's uh, you could say, a well-known um, if you consider it a microgrid a- application, right? right. Um, so that's, that's already there in terms of, let's say, scaling up yeah. <laughs> to the grid. And, and we're seeing it as, as on the horizon. Uh, so uh, I guess you'll, you'll have to get back to us uh, in terms of, you know, as we get into the details and come up with kind of the, the metrics that we would need to be, um, you know, creating or, or unlocking to, to uh, determine like, okay, th- this then implies uh, certain equipment solutions or, or non-wire solutions are, are needed to, to help, you know, mitigate this. But in general, equipment being run uh, over spec, yeah, that's that's a big thing. Um, it, it goes also for the generation side, things like storage, huge impact, yeah, right? Very um, much so. I personally am like an EV owner, uh, and when it's either hot or cold, my car gives me issues. I can't drive in, you know, there's a D mode and there's a B mode on my car. I, I drive a Renault Zoe uh, in, in Germany, and... Um, when it goes into to B mode, you're able to kind of recapture a bit more, right, uh, energy. And um, it doesn't let you when it's too hot or too cold, right? Really? So it's, I did so you're, you're already getting those kind of specifications. Yeah, yeah. Amplify this to, to the grid, and when you consider things like vehicle-to-grid applications, all these things need to be thought of. So it's, it's uh, you know, on the generation side, as well as, as you mentioned, on the you know, traditional uh, equipment being run in you know, non-designed ways yeah. to mm-hmm. accommodate for, for such things. Uh, so it's... It's a complex <laughs> problem, definitely okay. well understood. So I want to I want to switch background. You you've taken me here and here. We're going to go back. We're going to end on IEEE, but before all we right, get right. there, um, you've been in business six years now. Six years. Where are you going? 
Where, where do you see the company as the, as you relate to the power industry? And and make a pitch for 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 the company. <laughs> okay, okay? okay. Yeah. So uh, we are founded to better understand the power grid, right? Um, and to then use that knowledge to understand the new agents that we felt were operating with the grid. I think we're going to continue to do that, and we're going going to continue to look at it in newer ways. Yeah. Um, so as, as I mentioned earlier, looking at it from a materials perspective, looking at it from a chemical perspective, looking at it from uh, even uh, going further into you know, demand response and things like that, um, changes in consumer behavior, right? I, I see that's, that's where we're evolving to. Um, separately on transport, the you know, evolution of transportation, I see that happening as well. Things like you know, e-aviation, uh, e-propulsion and, and shipping, like these are all things that we feel like we're going to need to know better in order to understand their impacts to the grid. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so I feel like that journey is going to continue, uh, and we're going to, you know, grow and become, you know, better at, you know, understanding these trends. Uh, looking forward as well in terms of uh, new uh, impacts and, and trying to cover that in a, in a very transparent way, right. so that the industry can understand, hey, this is what this third party thinks right. and. And uh, yeah, hoping to do more of that. Well, I can tell you that um, from the work that we've done with you all in the last couple of years, the integrity of the process, right, and the value that you bring is immeasurable. So thank you for doing it. Thank you for being part of this. One last thing, IEEE. Um, you've got a lot of these. Uh, one, I'm, I'm an engineer, a mechanical engineer, and they allowed me into IEEE, yeah. right? <laughs> but even we see that changing. You, you kind of mentioned it, which I thought was funny, is. It should also be IEEE plus, yeah. Because there are it, it, there's a convergence of knowledge and things coming together. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's a good. Uh, j just a quick anecdote yeah. on that. Um, our lead of hydrogen research is a mechanical engineer. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and and the reason why that, that was the case is is we felt like there were certain things uh, and it, it, let's say there's certain perspectives, right? You right. Can, you can you can take to try to understand. A problem or a solution or, or a new technology or an existing technology that's now a new technology right, in other yeah, areas yeah. Uh, and compression was a big was a big aspect of, of hydrogen especially when it comes to transport it's going to be very high pressures that are going on there right right and 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 obviously you need compressors and you know you need to have an understanding of mechanical engineering uh, you know in, or, in order to we do that. We know so, compressors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like things that rotate we're yep. big into rotating yeah. <laughs> equipment yeah that's great. Um, that by the way is a we are looking at something on hydrogen power. Yeah. We're talking about the use of hydrogen. There's a lot of things, you know, hydrogen in gas. Uh, hydrogen is part of the whole solar, you know, when separation, oxygen here, hydrogen here. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of work going on in that. I know Avangrid, we just in, in, interviewed a gentleman from Avangrid, and they're doing a lot of research on, on the hydrogen aspects. Of, yeah. Uh, and I'm not talking about everybody used to say, oh, hydrogen fuel cells. Gonna, Hydrogen has got so many more better uses than a fuel cell because right. you can't seem to get there with a fuel cell. But um, that's great that you're working on that, that you're continuing. That, I appreciate, again, you're at the, at the leading edge of change, and that's what we're doing. But IEEE, you got all these geeky guys. They're all engineers. Yep. Engineers love to solve problems, yep. and we love to come together. But uh, talk about the value that your people get from IEEE and the value that they give to IEEE. Yeah, so many of our members are, are uh, or many of our, uh, our, my colleagues are IEEE members, uh, and it's, it's really instrumental to, to doing our research. And when you talked earlier about um, trying to understand it and forecast what's going to go on in the market, um, that's particularly where we value uh, IEEE, uh, is we look at things like standard developments, right? And, right. and, and, and we are you know, trying to do a better job of participating in the, in the yeah. communities, but uh, also uh, just looking at, you know, where are we in that development process to really, especially with, with concepts, as I mentioned earlier, like, you know, solid state transformers, yeah, things yeah. like that, um, to, to understand, okay, could adoption be happening, right, as a precursor to pilots and, and things like that, um, and, and that's how we really uh, try to look at each technology that we go into, right? Um, what are people talking about? What challenges are they facing? Uh, and and through through the IEEE uh, membership, we're able to understand that, uh, and and that's what we feel like we really uh, can value from the service. Um, in addition, to be honest, things like this yeah. are also really great. A chance for us, an opportunity for us to to talk with with the industry, uh, share with them what we, what we think is happening. They tell us, you know, like, hey, you're full of it, or uh, or you know, we, we we agree with you here. So that's it's a great opportunity to have these kind of dialogues and discussions. 
Good. So hopefully we'll see the Grid Edge Conference in San Diego in April, because now yep. PES is every two years. Yep. Yep. And in these off years, we've decided we're going to put on a another conference, right? Uh, I sit on the steering committee of that conference, and I'm really excited because I think the Grid Edge Conference is going to be where all the problems are and <laughs> yeah. where all the opportunities are. Because Correct. a lot of the change we talked about is happening at the Grid Edge. But, and I, anyway. I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a great point because it has to be both. Yes. Right? It can't just be the, the problems. I think trying to, to utilize these problems um, as also solutions to mitigate you know, yeah, some of that, yeah. like, I, I think it, it plays a critical role there. Excellent. Mike, thank you for joining us. Thanks, thank Al. you, and I appreciate the work that you guys do with APC. Thank you.